Taking three. I'm going for the St. Louis now. Oh, no. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> you get your two? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thoughtgoer here, of course. And today we are going to take a look at some Russian cruisers. Yes. Now, I know the Russian cruisers came out yesterday, which was March 23rd. However, I was a little busy yesterday, actually, uh, doing a bit of traveling, so I was away from uh, my uh, computer here, so I wasn't able to get any video up, but we'll take a look at it today. Um, and, you know, we're going to start with the Tier 3 Bogatir, I believe it's called. Um, this is the, you know, the first Russian cruiser that I've actually um, made it to, and I'm actually going to test out today, and we're going to do it live, um, just, you know, and talk a little bit here about the Russian cruisers. Now, I'm incredibly excited uh, about this new content. It's not that I'm incredibly excited about there being Russian cruisers in, uh, cruisers in the game and uh, you know I just think the Russian cruisers are going to be amazing blah 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 all that. No. I am incredibly excited just for new content in the game, right? Really been looking forward to some new content here in the game. Uh, it's been a while <laughs> so I'm really happy that there's new uh, new ships here in the cruiser or in the new ships in the game sorry and it doesn't matter to me what uh, type of ships they've put in here no new content that's great so we're gonna play some Russian cruisers and uh, this is gonna be pretty great I think now the Russian cruisers obviously I assume you know we've all seen the video uh, the wargaming put out about the cru Russian cruisers so obviously you know it's the artillery on these things that have um, that is going to distinguish them from the other cruisers. Now, I understand that this is only tier 3, right? We can't really <laughs> expect a whole lot out of this ship, but we'll take a look at some of the just base numbers here. Now, this Bogatir is fully upgraded. I had the free experience to actually get it fully upgraded. I just didn't have enough to jump myself over to uh, tier 4. But, you know, we'll get to tier 4 with very little effort, I'm sure. So 20,500 hit points, that's not too bad at all. Uh, main battery guns, right? We've got a few uh, main battery guns here, right? Uh, which isn't too bad. We've got our dual turrets on the stern and on the bow. Then we have single mounted turrets running along the side. Um, there is no AA on this ship, which is not surprising. I mean, we can see the ship here was launched in uh, 1902. So in the early 1900s like that, obviously, you know, they were still just experimenting with uh, aircraft carriers and whatnot. So wasn't considered, aerial bombing wasn't considered a huge threat, so no anti-aircraft on this uh, ship itself. Maneuverability, we've got a max speed of 24 knots, which is, eh, right? <laughs> Let's check out the old St. Louis. This is probably, uh, you know, the reigning champion at Tier 3 right now. Uh, 22. So we're faster than the St. Louis. That's not bad. And that kind of plays to the Russian cruisers, right? Uh, they had mentioned how these early Russian cruisers are some of the fastest, cru were some of the fastest cruisers in the world at the time. And we can see that with the speed. Two extra knots there over the St. Louis. Uh, turning rudder shift, yeah. Surface detectability, 10 kilometers. Let's just check out our range, 10.3. So basically we get spotted as soon as we can start firing at enemy ships. But again, tier 3, not so bad. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to take a brief look before we jump into battle here. I just want to run through some of these uh, Russian cruisers, take a look at them. Obviously, I find the Russian cruisers look amazing, <laughs> because they do. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the tier 10, right, obviously, but man, doesn't this thing look awesome, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I love cruisers, as I'm sure you're aware. I, I'm, you know, pretty much a cruiser captain. Uh, you might uh, sneak in some destroyers in there, because I love my destroyers, but cruisers are where I love to be, and I think that they just look amazing, right? This tier 10 looks phenomenal. Uh, the Zhao also looks amazing, right? Um, but uh, I'm pretty excited for this. I can't wait for the Hindenburg once I get the Hindenburg either, because the Hindenburg is a beautiful ship. So that's our tier 10 uh, ship we have here. And there was one other I wanted to take a look at. Oh, God, Thakor. Um I forget. The Kirov, yes. The tier 5. Now, I wanted to take a look at the tier 5, because the tier 5 did actually exist during World War II. Uh, participated in the the Battle of Leningrad, right? Basically used as a floating artillery platform 
uh, more or less much like um, there was a battle a Russian battleship with her as well um, an old outdated Russian battleship obviously but what I'm really excited about for this ship is the guns right three six nine uh, so yeah okay there's three back there yeah it just looks a little weird anyway three six nine so you know 180 millimeter guns here now the firing rate of these guns uh, let's take a look Bo -ba -do. I don't think it's anything spectacular well four rounds a minute isn't too bad at all um, but still you know it I think this is gonna be a nice tier 5 cruiser to have the speed 35.5 knots is gonna be amazing um, so this might be a keeper for me at tier 5 in terms of a tier 5 cruiser um, so I'm excited to get up uh, to here, right? Once you get to tier 5, usually in ships is when things start to get a little more uh, real, I guess, we'll say. <laughs> you guys can figure that one out. <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to port. We are going to jump into a battle here in the old Bogatir, Bogatiria, and, um, and play that out. See how she handles, see what she does. And, uh, you know, we'll do that live as well, so um, we will be right back. Of course, for you guys, just a matter of a swipe screen here, but <laughs> we will be right back. All right, folks, here we go. In the Bogatir, uh, first battle, and we're going to test her out, see what she's got. Uh, we are going for C, most likely, but we'll see what the uh, allies do here. Let's take a look at some turret rotation speeds. Pretty terrible, right? Pretty bad. Uh, keep in mind, though, that the captain on this ship, excuse me, has no uh, training whatsoever. Right, just a stock captain, so that would attribute to uh, some of the slower turret rotation speeds. I understand, though, that the Russian cruisers are going to be, you know, the guns hit pretty heavy, uh, hit pretty hard. However, uh, their citadels are higher above the waterline than normal, right? So it makes them fairly easy to take out. Uh, like I said, I wanted to go to sea, but it just doesn't look like people are going up there to sea. So I'm not going to do that. It does look like the team is focusing A and B, so that is where we're going to go. What I'm going to try and do here, uh, let's just turn our ship a little. Kind of do a strafing run over here at B if possible. I'm not willing to get into there to B and duke it out. Um, I don't know... I, I'm not 100% sure what this ship can do yet, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't want to go in there and just die uh, right away. So that's why I'm not going in there. Eh, probably for the best, too. You can see there's some enemy torpedoes running through B right now. So we'll uh, we'll just let that go. <laughs> I'm not going to bother with it. <laughs> We're going to make our way to A, and then we'll push around. Uh, we have one Allied Destroyer up there to C. Um, yeah, hopefully he doesn't die anyway, maybe be able to contest it a little. And we see our equivalent out there, oh, another Bogatir. Ah, the speed. This is the biggest thing that I hate about uh, these earlier tiers, is the speed. I demand higher speeds. Uh, is I just want it. I want, you know, a good 30 knots is, is probably what I'm... I'm best at, what I'm comfortable at, anything above that is just gravy, and it you know, explains why I love cruisers so much, <laughs> they're so much faster. Anyway, this ship looks pretty cool, uh, not too bad at all, let's just get a frontal view of her, yeah, looks pretty cool, she looks pretty well armored as well at uh, tier 3, um, we'll have to see once we get into some battles here how she handles the, uh, getting hit. But not too bad. You can see on f the front here her um, bow, right? It's a, a ramming bow. <clears throat> not uncommon in uh, early naval warfare, you know, early 19th century, um, early 20th century, sorry, uh, for, you know, ships to ram each other. Not uncommon at all. Um, even in World War II, there was a whole lot of ramming going on, especially uh, on the Atlantic. Uh, when you're fighting the U-boats, you know, I have a, lots of stories. In fact, I gave away some books uh, earlier last year when I visited the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic uh, describing many actions in which uh, Canadian corvettes were ramming German U-boats, right, to take them out. So ramming, you know, it's pretty much um, what's considered a, a really valid battle strategy in these early 1900s. 
and uh, that attributes to the bows on the ships, right? The idea there being that it would it, it comes to a point below the waterline, right? And it's going to puncture the enemy hull, cause the enemy to take on water, while your ship is going to be relatively unscathed uh, because you have that uh, ramming hull or ramming bow on there. Anyway, we're finally coming in... No, we're not. <laughs> I thought we were finally coming into range of something. Uh, but this New York is still two kilometers out, so we're going to bow into her. Try and close the distance here before she dies. Uh, Svetlana, that is... It's not necessarily that the ship is, you know, rocking. I, I don't really know how good the ship is or not, but what is so awesome about it is the name Svetlana. That just sounds awesome, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, we're finally in range of something, so we fire our shots off, and before they land, the enemy New York is taken out. Fantastic. So we have a Yabari, but uh, you can see on the minimap the Yabari is running away. He's uh, heading back to the north. Our hold on B is secure, but it's not... Uh, it's a tentative hold, right? You can see an enemy battleship is moving into B right now. Uh, so hopefully someone's going to go up there and do something about it. I'm not. Uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not going to go take on that Wyoming. <laughs> no. Um, and it would just be, I think, a waste to turn around right now. I've gone this far. Uh, maybe not. Damn it. Oh well. Oh well. We'll probably end up losing this one now. <laughs> so <laughs> this you bury. Oh, okay. Fine. Fine. We're doing it. I'm turning around. I'm not going to be able to chase down the Yabari. Uh, I'm going to get into the back of the pack, right, with uh, Svetlana and the Mermensk there. We've got the Bogatir, which is a little ahead of me as well. I'll probably be able to keep up to that guy, considering it's the same ship that I'm in, but... No. I'm going to turn. Uh, we're going to turn and start doing something about B. That's going to be the plan anyway. You can see my uh, aircraft carrier is in there in B with some planes trying to do something prevent the cap here we've got a wyoming uh, i saw a mini uh we've got a furataka is that what i saw there maybe potentially uh, but the wyoming is almost within range so we're going to try and get in here and engage this guy what i'm hoping to do is obviously set him on fire <laughs> set him on fire get him gone uh, i need to pay a whole lot of attention here because things are not going very well i mean look the enemy is taking a they're swooping down from a uh, we have, or sorry, from C rather, we have A, which is not too bad, but the enemies at A, or my allies at A, are now chasing down your Yubari, uh, probably looking for an enemy aircraft carrier as well, which isn't great. So it's not all up to me, but there is a whole lot riding on what I'm going to be able to accomplish here at B. Um, spoiler alert, it's probably not going to go too great at all. Anyway, we'll try and keep bow into this um, into this Wyoming's for as long as we can. We can see his guns. Yeah, he's turning towards me, so he's firing. There he goes, and we'll let those shots come in, and then we're gonna turn. Took out my engines. We'll repair that. He's on fire. Very little health, and there he goes. Fantastic. Now that obviously was because of the support I had from some ally ships. Now we have the Furutaka who has popped up, so this guy is a fairly big threat to me because of the large caliber of guns he has on his ship. Uh, I imagine that he's going to be able to settle me fairly easily, so we're going to go bow on. Furutaka seems to be just you know, going through B, trying to meet up with some of his allies uh, over there who are heading down into uh, basically where we spawned. Um, yeah, we're going to let him go. I'm not going to, well, I'm not fast enough to chase him down. <laughs> We're just going to keep going straight, and we're going to get ourselves into the cap. I am on fire times two, so that kind of sucks. Um, but there's nothing I can do about it right now. Repairs on cooldown. No, I don't have a premium repair on this damn ship. It's a tier three, all right? Uh, I'm not spending extra money on a premium repair party for a tier three ship. Sorry if that makes you angry, but that's the way I am. Anyway, <laughs> we do see another Bogatir off in the distance. Maybe I can get myself into B here and take that guy out. Our fire has, what, 14 seconds remaining, so we should be able to survive that. Enemy bombers incoming. Uh, I have no anti-aircraft uh, guns to do anything about those guys, so we are just going to steam in a straight line and hope that they don't do anything. Uh, the enemies, mm, they just seem to want to take out our aircraft carriers, which well, makes sense. It makes sense, but how... You know, what is it actually doing for them? Right now, we're capping B. We still have our hold on A. 
Uh, so we have two of the three cap points, or about to have two of the three cap points. So, you know, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, yeah, all right, makes sense. Uh, you can see the Congo, she's turning around. She's coming right at B right now. So this kind of sucks. Uh, her guns aren't pointed towards me as of yet, but I fully expect them to be, right? So there we go. We captured B. We're going to uh, just continue sailing in a straight line to get ourselves out of here. Actually, we're going to turn now because the Congo is going to be firing. We can see just fired. Shots are incoming. Turn, 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 turn. Ah, uh, and there we go. <laughs> there we go. So that is Tier 3 Russian Cruiser Bogatir. Um, no surprise, well, not, not really surprised, right, that we got the Citadel there. I assume that was a Citadel. Um, it says it right in the description, or Wargaming said it right in the description in their video the other day with Dasha, who is dashing. <laughs> that was a bad joke, I know. Um, but we knew that uh, the Russian cruiser was going to be a little squishy, right? So let's uh, switch over to another Bogatir here. Yeah, there we go. So an armored cruiser, I believe, or a protected cruiser is what she is. Um, and essentially, if you don't know what that means, oh, we can get a good look here at the bow, right? The way the, the, uh, the ramming bow kind of skirts out. Um, what was I going on about? Yeah, something. That's the trouble with these live battles, right? I'm sorry, I had to take a sip of coffee. Uh, that's the trouble with these live battles. I, uh, I get talking about something. And then I sort of forget what I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Does that. What is this guy shooting at? Okay, Minikaze. And we Minikaze managed to get down here. Uh, we're going to lose B. Obviously, the Congo is now in B, taking it out. Let's see, though, if Buddy can take out this Minikaze. Yeah, not too great. Uh, what other ships do we have? We have our Congo. I mean, the... This was pretty much um, the mistake that our team made, right? We went down to A, and uh, went down to A, took A, right? And then just sort of went straight up hunting the aircraft carriers. And, of course, they're over here in the corner, which just takes everyone who went up here to hunt down the aircraft carriers. You can see the different ships that have died. Um, you know, it just takes them completely out of the battle. I really could have used support at B to take B, maybe try and push, turn things around, maybe, uh, you know. But it just wasn't meant to be. At these lower tiers, it's kind of expected, I suppose, uh, because not many people, you know, really know the strategy behind the game or aren't really paying attention. You know, they're just sort of in it to get some kills. Um, yeah, it's kind of tragic, but this is sort of common. So we're going to let this battle play out. Uh, obviously, we're going to lose, but what I want to do is I just want to take a look at the end of the battle to see what sort of experience and credits that this thing, the Bogatir, can earn in a very mediocre battle, right? It might even be poor battle, we'll say, a poor battle. I only got 19 hits, 2 fires, the 1 base capture, um, so not, not fantastic. Anyway, switching over to our Congo, who is in a world of trouble right now. You can see he's duking off with uh, another Congo, Furutaka. That Furutaka probably launched torpedoes, by the way. <laughs> We'll see if this Congo recognizes that, or if, in fact, the Furutaka did launch torpedoes. Um, and he's, you know, facing off against another full health Congo. So this obviously is not going to go well and should end fairly quickly. Um, I do, I know, you know, we put a few videos up in the Congo. I, I do like the Congo. I talked about it before. But, yeah, the dispersion on the Congo is something else, isn't it? It's uh, pretty ridiculous now, I know. In the game, anyway, they, they did that, right, to balance out the Congo battleship, sorry, at Tier 5 to make sure that they're not overpowered. Uh, historically, the accuracy probably wasn't that bad. Anyway, battle over. Eh. <laughs> it's pretty terrible results, gotta say. Let's see what we have. I wasn't bottom of the, bottom of the uh, team here, so that's not too bad. And money... Yeah, damage. Bit of damage. Money is. I'm happy to walk away with the money, and uh, some experience, right? So there we go. Russian cruiser Bogatir. Um, not too bad. Uh, we didn't really get to check her out a whole lot because the battle kind of sucked. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jump into another battle. I thought about ending it there, but yeah, it kind of sucks, right? Ending it on that. 
Might be a little better if maybe we ended on two utter defeats. That might go a little better. Who knows? Who knows? But we'll jump into another battle here with the Bogatir. Hopefully get some sort of victory going on here, right? So I can get that uh, 1.5 off of the list. And let's see what we've got. So the matchmaking does look decent for now anyway, right? Tier 4 is fighting against uh, Tier 3. That makes sense, but it's going to make it hard. <laughs> um, what am I concerned about most of all on the enemy team? Hmm. Probably. I mean, obviously the Wyoming is a pretty big threat, right? But those uh, Svetlana's, is that how we say it? Pronounce it? I'm not sure. But th those probably are going to be a pretty big threat if they decide to stick together. Whether or not they do is going to be a toss-up, though, because you can see we have no divisions on this team, right? So obviously those players um, aren't communicating outside of the game. Or, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Anyway, battle starts. <laughs> And we're going to jump in, see what we can do. We're on big race. <clears throat> we do have two enemy destroyers. I am inclined to go to Destroyer Alley. Yes. Um, Yimbari. What? Barry. Did he just spell that wrong? Because I know that there's a new... We saw it in the patch notes. There's going to be a new... Uh, Japanese premium cruiser in the game, right? Based off the Yabari. Um, but it's not here, there. I thought someone was talking in chat saying that, that someone on the enemy team had it, but no, they just have the normal Yabari, which, yeah, it's a premium ship. You got it from um, closed beta. I think it was part of a uh, package, much at the same time when the Sims, the Gremiashki, uh, when those ships were on sale, right? Anyway, anyway, uh, let's take a look here. Yeah, so my team going to the north, and I'm not going to go directly into Destroyer Alley now that I see how the team is dispersing. Just, yeah, kind of want to stay in the center. Yeah, we're going to stay in the center. Uh, hopefully this way, you know, I'll be able to still engage enemy ships over on the west. Uh, while kind of supporting my um, team in the north. And you can see that someone just typed in left flank, question mark. <clears throat> and now and allied ships are moving to the left. <clears throat> God, I hate this opening part of the battle like this. When everyone's like, just it's basically just people running around with, uh, like chickens with their heads cut off, right? They're like, oh my god, oh my god, what do we do? This flank is open, this flank is open, blah, blah, blah. Changing courses. Ugh, I hate it. It's so disorganized. But uh, we're going to have to deal with it because this is these are the cards that we were dealt with. I'm turning to engage the uh, Kuma. Uh, I don't want to continue forward because I don't know what is going to be beyond that island, whereas at least if I'm turned this way and I start engaging the Kuma uh, from this angle, you know, I, I'm going to be basically broadside to her, um, but, you know, obviously I can steer into her, but I want to go this way, because I'm going to have some destroyer support, uh, support behind me, as you can see, uh, but also I did want to expose myself to any enemies who are still in the middle. You can see uh, destroyer pop up, there's an enemy cruiser, another enemy cruiser, so that's what I was trying to avoid. Uh, maybe it would have been a good idea to stick on the same course, because at least then I'd have direct support from my allied cruisers there, but this is the choice I made. <laughs> so, oh, Islav, good. So tier 4, Russian cruiser. Uh, obviously, we've got a Kuma, we've got another Bogatir, we're on fire, so we'll put that out, and we're turning. Turn, 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 turn. I'm already not a fan of this Bogatir, to tell you, <laughs> if we're going to be totally honest right now. <laughs> At uh, Tier 3, I'm not liking it. Not liking it at all. Uh, it could just be a f matter of this being a Tier 3 battle. I don't know, but I'm not so impressed with her. Um, I wonder if I get any Citadels on that Kuma, in fact. That might be something to try out. Svetslana, you're coming awfully close. So we're going to uh, start engaging this guy. Funny story, actually. Uh, the other night, while we're you know dealing with this guy, the other night, um, I've got a wireless mouse, or had a wireless mouse. When I go to sleep at night, I watch 
shows. So I'm, I'm watching uh, King of the Hill through again, because I love that show. Um, so we're watching King of the Hill through again. Um, I've got my computer chair next to my bed, because uh, on the other side is a nightstand, and I, I just use my computer chair on this side as a nightstand because <laughs> I'm lazy. Anyway, anyway, my mouse is on the computer chair, right? King of the Hill is over, it's like late, I'm pass, passing out, so I'm just trying to reach my mouse to turn off the computer so that I can, uh, you know, go to sleep with some peace and quiet. I'm reaching over onto the chair, trying to grab the mouse, and the mouse falls off the chair, and on the floor I have a glass of water. Yes. So half asleep, eyes closed, groggy as all hell, I managed to knock the mouse off my chair and it lands plop straight into my cup of water. Awful. And uh, it is a Nagata Razor mouse that I have. The Epic Edition, I think they call it. Um, it cost me a bit of money. I fucking love that mouse. It is amazing. And it is now broken. Gone. Garbage. Yes. <laughs> oh man, I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately went from being groggy, like ready to just pass out, to hearts pumping, oh my god, what just happened? <laughs> so I had to go out and buy a new mouse, uh, which set me back a bit of money, because obviously I wanted another uh, Razer, another Nagata Razer uh, Epic Edition mouse, which of course the store did not have. Uh, I could have obviously ordered it. And uh, that would have, you know, I would have gotten it that way, but I was not willing to wait a few days for that to arrive in the mail, so I went out uh, to Best Buy and I bought a new one. Anyway, wanted to share that story with you because I thought it was amazing. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> one in a million shot. And, uh, yeah, got it in there. Fuck, that cost, that cost me about $100, that, that little mistake right there. <laughs> well, actually, it cost me more, right, because I'm not factoring in the cost of the original mouse, which yeah, I think it was about 150 so we're looking at about $250, which is what that cost me. That little mistake there, but oh my god. Anyway, anyway, getting back to the battle, we're not doing too bad. Um, you know, even in the ships, um, biggest concern though is that obviously we just, or so we have lost our battleship. That's not fantastic. I uh, don't want to lose our battleship, right? Which one was it? Or Wyoming. Okay, we have two Wyoming, so we lost one of the Wyoming's. That's not terrific, uh, because the battleship. You know, we really need those heavier guns. We've got a Kuma coming around, so we're gonna. Oh my God, torpedoes! Oh, thank God. I was so afraid that that Kuma was gonna launch his torpedoes at me. Um, luckily, my ally just saved me there. So thank you, Mr. Ally. Don't ground yourself, Thakor. There we go. Uh, South Carolina moving in. Now he's going to be a fairly big threat here, um, you know, just because he has uh, higher caliber guns. Probably going to easily be able to uh, penetrate us and do a bit of damage. Uh, Svetlana, God, I love the name of that ship. Uh, it's just obviously, you know, it, you picture you hear Svetlana, and I, I picture just some gorgeous Russian lady, right? Obviously. <laughs> Uh, so that's you know one of the main reasons why I love the ship, and I'm probably getting a little too distracted with her right here, right now, uh, considering the why uh, South Carolina is returning shots on me, and I am almost dead. So we're gonna try and turn out of this whole situation, see if we can't preserve our life a little longer. Um, maybe take out the Svetlana. There we go. Oh God, South Carolina is all over me. We are not going to ground ourselves. It's not what I'm going to let happen here, so we're going to turn away, okay, alright, we're doing good, <laughs> we're still alive, <laughs> and, oh, oh, damn, I was hoping I set the Svetlana on fire, uh, hoping that that player would burn death, and the Bogatir takes me out, yeah, whatever, um, this is going to be another defeat, obviously, looking around, not so great, but at least in this battle, um, we got to see a little more, or at least I got to see a little more of the capabilities of the Bogatir here. Um, not too bad, but obviously something we do need to keep in mind with the Bogatir is just the complete and utter lack of armor, right? Um, so obviously, you know, she just can't take hits, and, and this is becoming fairly apparent. Two battles in. 
I'm going to switch over to the Svetlana here. We're going to, I want to take a closer look at her, uh, see what she's got. So the guns, uh, I'm hoping that this is not going to be another Karlsruhe. I'm saying that with a grain of salt, because I don't think she will be. I mean, it looks like she's got some pretty decent guns for broadsides, uh, so that's pretty good. But yeah, I just, I don't, because of the Karlsruhe, oh my god, isn't that ship terrible? <laughs> I hate the Karlsruhe. <laughs> but that's what I'm hoping that this is not going to be, right? Mm. Sorry, more coffee, but anyway. Um, that's what I'm hoping, uh, you know, Spitzelon is not going to be a uh, Carl Shrew. We have two allied ships remaining. This did not go very well. Um, so we're two defeats today. Eh, whatever. Uh, obviously in the upcoming future, you know, in upcoming videos, we're going to take a closer look at these Russian cruisers. I'm going to try and start grinding my way through them as quick as possible. I have, uh, I think it's about 4,500 experience remaining, free experience remaining. Um, now this is the experience that's just sitting there, right, that doesn't need to be converted. If we're talking converted, I have well over a million free experience that I can convert, uh, but I'm just not willing to spend the gold on that. Uh, anyway, anyway, um, so what we're going to try and do is uh, I am going to try and get myself up to Tier 5. Um, we'll see how that goes, and to get to Tier 5, I probably am going to use as much free experience as I possibly can, like just the stuff that's built up, not stuff that I have to spend gold on to convert. But just to get myself up to tier 5 and then, uh, you know, start grinding it out from there probably. Because um, I'm going to, you know, I really want to get to tier 5 and then we'll kind of move from there, right? Uh, see how it goes from there. But that's my plan with the Russian cruisers. Uh, in the meantime, while all that's going on, obviously we're going to continue to strive for the Hindenburg. It's just the Hindenburg is actually now going to be placed on uh, the back burner. Um, all of my credits and effort will go into the Russian cruisers uh, just so that I can start exploring the new content, right? Because um, this is just going to bring a new level to the game, obviously, for everyone. Everyone, and you know, I'm so happy <laughs> that there's new cruisers. <laughs> oh, I just can't, can't tell you how great that makes me feel. Um, what else do we know about new content coming to the game? Well, it was shared with us. Uh, that we know that we're going to get some new premium ships, right? In fact, one of the premium ships that may be coming up, um, it was just mentioned that you might see it in-game. I forget the class of destroyer it was, uh, but it was a, a British like, Tier 2, Tier 3 destroyer that they were, uh, that we may see in the game, right, by some, I, I imagine, super testers who are testing it out and whatnot. Um, but that we may see. So it's interesting to see that we're starting to get into some British things here because I cannot wait for the Royal Navy. Love those Royal Navy ships. And in fact, the Royal Navy is going to be, um, I think, is going to be one of the best lines to go into, um, especially as the game develops more and they expand our lines more, right? Because there is so many ships to choose from uh, with regards to the Royal Navy that I can't wait to see uh, what ships they do decide to go with. And then, obviously, as the tree expands and the game develops more, I can't wait to see what um, you know other ships they add to it. Something else that they mentioned, uh, I don't know, you know whether you know what sort of timeline they're if they're sticking to this timeline or not. But we do know that uh, German battleships are coming, uh, well last we heard, August of this year. So that is going to be something to look forward to as well. Uh, very excited to see what sort of German battleships they have. Um, and actually from, <clears throat> excuse me, from a historical standpoint, I really do enjoy the lower tiers. In terms of playing the lower tiers, no, not so much. But from a historical standpoint, yeah, I enjoy the lower tiers. Why I enjoy the lower tiers is because obviously a lot of the lower tier ships are pre-World War One era, or during World War One era, or just past World War One, right? And it is, it's so interesting to be able to see these ships in 3D models, because right now, if you do any research on those ships, um, like the Battle of Jutland, for example, right, the big naval battle in World War One, well, they thought was going to end the war, but anyway, um, you know, a lot of those ships that participated in the battle, all you get to see of those ships is maybe some schematics, some blueprints, uh, some fuzzy pictures taken at the time, right? So you really don't get a sense 
other than obviously your imagination reading through documents but you, I just don't get a sense of what the ships actually look like I have a hard time picturing them in full so it's that's why I love these earlier tiers from a historical standpoint is I get to see these ships um, and I finally like oh you know that is the Edmund class for example now obviously the Edmund class is a poor example because it was a fairly famous ship and uh, it's fairly easy to get or Edmund sorry those are Dresden class ships uh, fairly easy to get uh, pictures of them but like you know other ships not so much and I know that a lot of people have gripes about uh, especially with these Russian cruisers um, Russian ships about them being in the game because they never actually participated in World War II where were just pure paper ships. True, but I actually do enjoy seeing these ships um, because you can see the progression of technology, right? The changing of ideas throughout the tier and I find that interesting anyway. Anyway, another defeat. No real surprise there. <laughs> But we did it. We did it. We took out the Bogatier. Yeah, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm going to need some work on her, right? I'm uh, probably not going to put that much work into her, though, to be totally honest with you. I want to get to Tier 5 um, and start uh, getting that ship out and about. But, I mean, obviously, you know, we're still making money, a bit of experience here, so not too bad. Anyway, anyway. That is today's video, and I thought we'd just, uh, you know, take a look at some of these Russian cruisers. I'm um, doing it live today, not... Well, it's, it's, it is fun to do it live, I guess, uh, but also to save time because, yeah, a few things that need to get done today, uh, and then doing it this way actually cuts the time of making the video in half because I don't have to record and then do my audio. I do it all at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I do hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, leave any comments for me in the video comment section below. I love reading those and responding back to them. Hit the old like button if you did like today's video. Hit subscribe if you were not a subscriber. And as always, folks, I do hope you enjoy the rest of your day.